Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Thank you so much for choosing to spend a little time with us tonight on our Thursday night Bible study, and I pray that you will receive something that will help you on your life's journey. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to learn afresh the danger of establishing our own righteousness and forsaking your righteousness that you provided through your Son, Jesus Christ, on Calvary. Help us to not look uh, at ourselves as being better than others based upon what we have done for ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our subject for tonight is self-righteousness does not bring joy. And if it does not bring joy, then surely it must bring sorrow. Uh, we have two uh, characters that are mainly discussed tonight, uh, and they are the Pharisee and the tax collector. They are our main characters. So let's read uh, what the text says about them. Let's go to Luke chapter 18, verse 9 through 14, and I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. That's Luke chapter 18, verse 9 through 14. And it reads, he also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tithe of all that I get. But the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Uh, I tell you, this man went down uh, to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Now, this story is about two men, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector, as I said previously. And this is an example of an individual that looks down his sanctimonious nose on others with disrespect and disapproval. This is done ignorantly of any consideration of how God views us in our self-righteous mindset. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6 says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Now, just as it was with Adam and Eve, we, uh, what we do to hide our vulnerability or mistakes or sin is never sufficient. If the Lord does not intervene on our behalf, we will never reach an acceptable state in God's sight. Too often, members of the church that fall into the category of all have sinned and come short of God's glory, yet have the audacity to think more highly of themselves than they ought to. There is a reason that God's word teaches us that no one is good but God. A good way of looking at it is, is uh, none is good enough to be accepted to God of our own righteousness. Now, self-righteousness is based on how we see ourselves, while without faith, it is impossible to please God. The reason only God is good is because only God is loving. As a matter of fact, he is love. And he's merciful. His mercy endures forever. And his forgiveness is to all mankind, not just a, a select few. We are selective and we include uh, our enemies in those we uh, don't care about. But all is all. Throughout his public ministry, Jesus exposed the self-righteous and unbelief of the Pharisees. Uh, you can check uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 39 to, through 54. I don't have time to read all of the verses that I, I, I'll give you, 
uh, tonight, but uh, I, I encourage you to take the time and do some self-study. Uh, Jesus' picture, uh, he pictured them as debtors to too bankrupt to pay what they owed God. In Luke chapter 7, verse 40 through 50, he treated them uh, and he taught them the danger of guests fighting for the best seat. In Luke chapter 14, verse 7 through 14, and sons proud of their obedience, but unconcerned about the needs of others. In Luke chapter 15, verse 25 through 32. Now, the sad thing is that the Pharisees were completely mistaken and thought they were right. And they also thought that since they were right, they thought that Jesus was wrong. This is illustrated in the parable. Uh, and the Pharisees was wrong about prayer even. This Pharisees in the story prayed with himself and told God and anybody else that was listening how good he was. The Pharisees used prayers as a means of getting public recognition and not as a spiritual exercise or communion with God to glorify God. Too often in this modern day that we live in, we misunderstand the purpose of prayer and how to pray. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 uh, says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. And for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself maketh intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Even Satan don't understand groaning. Uh, that now the Pharisee was fooled about himself also. He thought that he was accepted by God because of what he did or what he did not do. In verse 12, he says, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. And too many of us are deceived this very same way in this day and time. The Jews were required to fast only one a uh, time or one day a year on the Day of Atonement. Uh, you can find that in Le Leviticus chapter 16, verse 29. But the fat they, but this guy, the Pharisee, fasted twice a week. Perhaps he, his intention was to impress God and to impress others around him. Uh, Leviticus uh, chapter 16, verse 29 says. This standard practice for you, a perpetual ordinances, ordinance, this is something that you do ongoing. It says, on the 10th day of the seventh month, both the citizens and the foreigners living with you are to enter into a solemn fast and refrain from all work. Verse 30 says, because on this day, atonement will be made for you to cleanse you. In the presence of God, you will be made cleanse of all your sins. And verse 31 says, it is a Sabbath of all Sabbath. You must fast. It is a perpetual ordinance. And I was reading the message version. And then this Pharisee tithed everything that came into his possession or tied it, or gave a tenth of everything that came into his possession, even the tiny herbs from his herb garden. Matthew 23 and verse 23 says, you are hopeless. And this is the message version, I believe. You are hopeless, you religion scholars and Pharisees, frauds. You keep meticulous uh, account of, uh, in books of your tithing on every nickel and dime you get. But on the meat of uh, God's law, everything, that the, the things like fairness and compassion and commitment, the absolute basics, you carelessly take it uh, or leave it. And in other words, you decide what you're going to do and what you're not going to do as found in God's word. Too often we make that same mistake. Careful bookkeeping is commendable, 
but the basics are required. Verse 24 says, do you have any idea how silly you look writing a life story that's wrong from start to finish, nitpicking over commas and semicolons? You're helpless, you religion scholars and Pharisees, frauds. You burnish the surface of your cups and bowls so that they sparkle in the sun, while the insides are maggoty, like maggots, uh, with your greedy and gluttony. Verse 26 says, stupid Pharisees, scour the inside and then the gleaming surface will be clean uh, and will mean something. He was also deceived about the publican who was also in the temple praying. The Pharisee thought that the publican was a great sinner, but the publican went home justified or filled with joy. But God uh, he, he, the, the publican went home justified by God while the proud Pharisee went home only self-satisfied. And you're filled with sorrow whenever you are self-satisfied, but you're filled with joy when you are justified before God. When God says, I'm pleased with what you're doing. To be justified means to be declared righteous by God on the basis of of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, as found in uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 19 through uh, chapter 4, verse 24, 25, rather. The publican repeatedly smote his breath, for he knew where his greatest problem was, and he called to God for mercy. The publican knew the vastness of his sin, but the Pharisee was happily ignorant of his own heart. The Pharisees' pride condemned him, but the publican's humble faith saved him. It is the prodigal son and elder brother over and over again. In contrast to the proud Pharisee are the children who were brought to Jesus in Luke chapter 18, verse 15 through 17. It was customary for the Jews to bring little children to the rabbis to receive their special blessing. So it is strange that the disciples would stand in the way. Perhaps they thought Jesus was exhausted and needed rest. Or they may have decided that he was not really interested in children. How wrong they were. This was not the first time the disciples had made the mistake of trying to get rid of people. They wanted to send the crowd away hungry, but Jesus fed them in Matthew chapter 14, verse 15. And they tried to stop the Canaanite woman from asking Jesus to heal her daughter in Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. But Jesus answered her prayer. The 12 decided uh, they, that they did not yet have the compassion of their master, but it would come later on. And if you don't have the compassion of Jesus, just hang in there. Keep working to get closer to Jesus. Get to know him better. And it will come later on. Jesus wants us to be childlike but not childish. An unspoiled child shows humility, faith, and dependency. A child has a sense of wonder that makes life exciting. Many years ago, my youngest son's birthday rolled around and I decided to tease him a little bit. For his birthday, I gave him a simple rubber band and he was so excited about what he thought was his birthday present. That was a childlike faith that his dad would provide the best possible for him. We need to have the childlike faith knowing, being confident that God will provide the absolute best for us.
We must learn to trust God to provide the best possible righteousness for us instead of our uh, instead of credit to uh, our righteousness on what we do for ourselves. The only way to enter God's kingdom is to become like children and be born again as Nicodemus, uh, a Pharisee, found out in John chapter 3. We must be willing to die to self and come alive in Jesus Christ. If the proud Pharisee had come, had become like a child, he too would have gone home justified and filled with joy. To be justified to God should bring joy to our lives, and it will. Our righteousness is imputed or deposited into our account. It's given to us, not by what we did, for ourselves, but by what Jesus did for us and our faith in what he did on the old rugged cross. We are justified by Jesus who lived a sinless life and died for sinning sinful people, the righteous for the unrighteous. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 21 says, for our sake, he made himself to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus died to atone for our sins. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulder. And for you and me, he died. They buried him in a barber tomb. And three days later, he rose from the dead with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. I'm so thankful that to God for the righteousness that was imputed to us. And now we can count it all a joy, all the trials and tribulation that we go through, that we face in life. We can count it all a joy and not only count it a joy, we can be thankful for it all because God is giving us his very best to make us his righteousness to make us what he has called us to be. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, help us to trust you with all of our heart and to give uh, the, for you to give us the strength not to lean unto our own understandings, but in all of our ways acknowledge you that you may uh, direct our path. Thank you for having this country's best interest at heart as we go through it, not only this country, but other countries, as we go through this time of the pandemic. We thank you for wanting to provide your best for us. Help us to want what you want for us. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Well, here in Tennessee, the numbers uh, of cases, of uh, new cases that have contracted the uh, COVID-19 virus uh, still climbing in most, a lot of other parts of the United States and the, the world. So we've got to do better. We've got to do better at wearing masks. And the scientists determined uh, earlier this week that wearing a mask not only protect those that you are around, but it will help to protect you. It will keep viruses from getting to you. And if you have virus, it'll help help others from getting it from you. And it's important that we practice social distancing. And wash your hands often. And God, I'm sure, will see us through this. And if we haven't reached it already, we will reach a point where we will thank God for this because he never brings us to something that he's not ready to take us through. This too shall pass. Until next time, take care and be blessed.